this is Sebastian KB0TTL. Um, if you're just now getting your brand new radio out of the box and are wondering what to do next, uh, this would be the video here for you. Uh, this would be part one of creating your first custom code plug for your new Anytone UV878, 868, or 578. The process will be almost completely similar for the three models. What we're showing in front of you now is CPS version 1.16 uh, with the model 878. So this will give you a pretty good idea of how it is that you're going to get started here with your new radio. All right, so with your radio turned on, with your cable plugged into your computer, with the other end of your cable securely fastened to the side of your 878, 868 or 578. Let's go ahead and turn the radio on, power the radio on. The first thing we're going to do is read the code plug that is inside of the radio. If you get that error, we're just going to go ahead and select the communication port, which should just now be coming up in your computer. Note that if you're running Windows 10, your computer will automatically detect your radio. If you're running Windows 7, your computer might automatically detect your radio. If your computer is not detecting your radio, then you may need to install the third-party GD32 COM port driver. Most of the time you will not have to do this. Let's go ahead and read the data that is currently in the radio. Okay, from here we're going to go ahead and modify the data that is already in the radio. And we're going to add a few things so that we can get started on our DMR journey here. The first thing to note on your radio is that you're going to want to go ahead and add your DMR ID information and call sign. There's a default DMR ID or radio ID in your radio of 12345678 in the ID name My Radio. With the information that's in here, you'll be able to go ahead and enter in analog frequencies and you'll be able to talk on analog repeaters. If you happen to program in a digital repeater, you'll be able to listen in on whatever talk group is on that repeater, but you will not be able to transmit to that repeater. Uh, for that, you're going to need to go ahead and put in your radio ID. Your radio ID is obtained for free at radioid.net. You'll need to register to get your free radio ID, DMR ID from radioid.net. We have other videos available which show you how to complete that process that is not in the scope of today's video. Okay then, so assuming that you already have obtained your radio ID from radioid.net, we're just going to look at mine here, Sebastian KB0TTL. The radio ID that radioid.net has assigned me. And of course, for your radio, you'll be using your own. Enter your radio ID in the top line. Um, in this bottom line, it's just best to put your first name and call sign. So for my case here, I'm going to put Sebastian KB0TTL. And press OK. So this radio is now set up for radio ID Sebastian KB0TTL. Next, we're going to go ahead and enter in some channels. To start out with, let's go for a local analog repeater. We'll start at basic, and then we'll get more complex as we need to. We're just going to click right up here in channel 1, and this box here is going to pop up. Have our receive frequency, our transmit frequency. 
we're going to leave this in analog because we're putting in an analog frequency. Here are our power levels. They're going to differ by radio model. If you're using a handheld, turbo is the highest power. It's going to be 7 watts. If you're running a mobile radio, turbo is going to be high power or 50 watts on UHF and VHF, and then 5 watts on 220 if you're using the tri-band mobile. Bandwidth. In the hand bands for analog, it's going to be 25 kilohertz. For digital, it's going to be 12 and a half. And for commercial, whether analog or digital, it's always going to be 12 and a half. We should ignore the following settings and leave them as is. Our subaudible tone, CTCSS, DCS, and squelch mode carrier. We're going to leave squelch mode set to carrier. So for our analog repeater, here's a local one. Here's one of my personal favorites, 147120, 147720, Raymore, Missouri, N0HV. I could reach this repeater from most parts of the Kansas City area. It's got a nice southern or south side amateur radio club is what they call it, southern location. But most of Kansas City area uh, can hit this repeater without a problem. Receive frequency 147.120. Transmit frequency 147.720. CTCSS, they have it on both transmit and receive, so we're going to put it on both transmit and receive on our side here as well. It's an analog frequency, we want high power, actually, we want turbo power, 7 watts. Bandwidth is 25 kilohertz, wide band, 151.4, CTCSS, select 151.4, CTCSS for transmit and receive on this repeater is 151.4. Channel 1 is now an analog repeater, 147120. For channel 2, we're going to do something slightly different. For channel 2, we're going to program in a local digital or DMR repeater. You'll want to pay special attention to a few of the things that we're going to do here. Before we put our DMR repeater in, though, we're going to need to load in a list of our talk groups which is available in CSV format from the Brandmeister website. We're then also going to need to go ahead and load in our contact list so that when we receive other people's DMR IDs while conversing with us here, the radio will translate that over into their name and call sign. So we're going to go ahead and import both of those right now. The um, contact list that we have here was obtained from radioid.net uh, here as well from the database dump files. I believe user.csv is what we use here. And that is our contact list. So I already have that downloaded here. So we're going to go to tools import. What we're interested in is digital contact list. And I've saved mine to demos. This is the one that we've downloaded. Okay, and then chalk groups. I'm going to show you where I got chalk groups in here in just a second. It's a CSV file. Or one of the sources you can get it from here it is the Brandmeister. Just Brandmeister chalk groups CSV. 
this is one of the sources for a CSV list. You can find uh, chalk group CSV list floating around um, the internet. DMR for Dummies is a good website. I've consulted with that before as well. Okay, so Brandmeister Chalk Groups. Right here, if you click CSV, um, it's going to let you download. If you scroll way, way, way down, you'll be able to see all of them. You'll be able to save the Brandmeister Master List Chalk Groups CSV. But um, you'll be able to find chalk group files like this around the web. This is just one of them. Okay, so Brandmeister chalk groups. We're going to go ahead and update that here. We're going to upgrade our, update our chalk groups and our digital contact list. We're going to go ahead and push the import button. And it'll take just a bit here. Um, occasionally you'll get um, a chalk group list or digital contact list that is not compatible with your radio and it'll fail to load or give you an error message. If that happens, do not worry. Um, sometimes the files that are uploaded are either corrupted or not in the right format. It is not difficult to find a different list on a different website or to try back in a few days is sometimes the one that's uploaded is corrupt. These are CSV files. These files are also compatible um, with Microsoft Excel or with OpenOffice, which is like a free version of what Microsoft Office would be or open source rather, I guess, rather than free um, would be a way of putting it here. So you can edit or view these CSV files in um, Excel or compatible spreadsheet software, which is a pretty cool little feature here as well. And it can take just a little while to update. So we'll give it a while. And then uh, we will go back to programming our digital channels. All right, so our import here is complete. So now when we go over here to chalk groups, we have our fields pre-populated with our Brandmeister chalk groups that are available. When we go to our radio ID list, our rather digital contact list, we have digital contacts up to the most recent digital contact submitted um, in the radio ID database. So that's cool. All right, so to program our digital repeater in, we're going to need that um, chalk groups list. We're just gonna go down we're going to look here one of our local digital repeaters one that I'm on here quite a bit the uh, WB0YRG repeater here in Independence Missouri we have our frequency pair which is pretty much the same as an analog repeater um, for 440 the offset is 5 megahertz plus offset we have our color code, which is the same as a CTCSS on an analog repeater. Color code regulates what signals the repeater will allow to access. This is the repeater's EMR ID we're not going to be using yet. Use time slot one for all of their Brandmeister talk groups. So we're going to program all of our talk groups in for time slot one. Time slot one is the time slot that um, this repeater sysop prefers people use. Um, I advise monitoring that <laughs> as you value as you value your ability to use certain repeaters. So color code four and time slot one. Frequencies 444975, 449975. Color code 4 and time slot 1. Channel type is digital. 
leave that on turbo power since it is a repeater. 12.5 kilohertz is standard for all digital communications. Notice how there's no CTCSS. Digital does not use CTCSS, nor does it use squelch. Digital is either on or off, one or zero. That is, unlike analog, you're not going to be fading halfway in and halfway out of a repeater. Um, basically, if your signal deviation or your data rate deviation is more than 5%, the repeater just simply isn't going to accept your transmission. So you're either completely into a digital repeater or you are completely out. So basically a squelch is not going to be necessary on a digital repeater. Okay, this comes to uh, talk groups now. You're actually on a repeater going to need to go ahead and program in an individual channel listing that is frequency pair, this information. You're going to need to put in an individual channel for each talk group that you want to access on the repeater. Supposing we want to go ahead and access the worldwide talk group on this repeater, we would leave that alone. Suppose I would rather select, and you're seeing your talk group list now that you just uploaded. Suppose you would rather select your state talk group as your primary talk group here on this channel. In this case, my state talk group would be Missouri. I would go ahead and double click Missouri. So now I have Missouri state talk group. So what I'm going to go ahead and do, since this is the WB0YRG repeater, I'm going to say WB0YRG Missouri Talk Group for this channel. And then select OK. Now like I just told you, for each and every talk group that you want to use on your repeater, you're going to have to enter in a separate channel. So suppose I would like to have worldwide for my second channel. I'm just going to go ahead and enter the information in here again. 444975 449975 Digital, 12, 4, I'm not going to change that this time because I want worldwide, WB0YRG, worldwide, talk group, Okay. Um, there's another thing we can do here. We can just simply copy, paste, paste the data for each of these to a separate channel. And then for each of these, we're just going to jump in and change. Our talk group is probably the fastest way of programming these repeaters here. And right now I'm just going to select these as random because it doesn't matter. But um, oh, BYRG, that's another local one here in the Kansas City area. I want that one to be BYRG. BYRG talk group, and notice how all that information is the same. Um, bare minimum, you're going to want certain uh, talk groups in here to test your radio, and then to disconnect from one talk group and go to the next. So I'm going to go over that here real quick. So these are going to be essential ones um, that you're going to want in any code plug. You're going to watch your talk group disconnect which is talk group 4000, by the way. Got 
watch your talk group disconnect. What that does is basically, suppose I'm on worldwide and I've keyed up worldwide and I'm talking on worldwide. Well, the repeater that I've keyed up is now going to be stuck on worldwide. If I change my channel to this BYRG channel right here and I key up, that repeater is not automatically going to detect that I've keyed up on BYRG. In fact, it's still going to be stuck up here on worldwide. So what am I going to have to do? I'm going to have to change channel to talk group disconnect, key up on 4000. The repeater will get the message, hey, he wants to disconnect. That repeater will then disconnect from worldwide. I would then set my channel to the BYRG channel, key up again, and the repeater will switch to BYRG. So that's why it's important that you have this talk group disconnect. It's kind of like the clutch on a manual transmission. You have to put the, push the clutch in to disconnect and then engage in the talk group you want. So <laughs> you got our uh, talk group disconnect. Next, I'm going to put something in called the parrot function. Got our parrot function here. Parrot talk group. So if you were to get on the repeater and select the parrot talk group, key up and identify. A few seconds later, you're gonna hear the repeater go live. You're gonna hear yourself on there identifying. So that's basically, saying, hey, yeah, you are accessing the repeater, and yes, I'm repeating this back to you, and this is what you sound like. So from there, you'll be able to adjust your mic gain or whatever else you need to make, whatever else you need to do to make your voice sound nice and pretty. So <laughs> that right there is Parrot. Okay, so we have our state talk group, worldwide, BR, BYRG, that is, talk group disconnect, Parrot, and just for fun and shortness and simplicity of the video, we'll do one more here. What would be a good one? Let's put one in here that most people are going to use. I'm in North America. Most people are going to use North America. We're going to put in North America. U.S., Canada, and Mexico. North America talk group. North America talk group. Okay, then we have successfully created our channel entries. Now there's one more thing we're going to have to do in order for the radio to see these channels here that we've just created. Oh, first of all, I see a problem here. Channel number two. Okay, it's an analog channel. Wait a minute. Okay, we skipped over that channel for some reason. Ignore that. All the channels we're going to use, we need to name. Here's the channel name. We don't want to just coming up channel one, of course, on our screen. We want to name it something. So this is 147.120. Analog. We're going to call it. This is an empty channel. Going to delete it out of there. Okay, we have to put our channels in a zone before the radio is going to be able to see these channels. The zones aren't automatically created. For the most part, you have to create your zone. So we're just going to say local repeaters. You can add both analog and digital frequencies to your zone. So sometimes when you... Um, 
let's just say this. Sometimes when you're adding a zone, you're going to see all of your channels listed over here, provided they haven't already been added to a zone. You have to have at least one zone in your radio in order to write the code plug to your radio, by the way. So local repeaters, we're going to add all eight channels to the zone. We're going to hit OK. Before you write your channel to your radio, go ahead and put your radio in frequency mode. I go into optional settings, work mode, go from frequency mode actually go to channel mode. You want your channels to appear on your radio, not just in a name and frequency. Now we're ready to program our radio with our basic code plug. And we want our contact list and everything to go over to our radio. Okay, so we've written our code plug to our radio, so now we're ready to use our radio. Now, back to those uh, talk groups. Suppose for some reason your file fails to upload or there's some kind of an error in talk groups. Uh, these talk groups can also be edited or a different talk group just simply added. Suppose you only want to add in a handful of talk groups and you don't want the big long lists in there. Um, that's fine here as well. You can add the talk groups individually as Brandmeister also has a PDF file available which has all 1147 available talk groups in it. There's a talk group number and then a talk group description. So say of course I have no reason to talk to South Korea but say I wanted to talk group 450. I go in here I could say South Korea That's a talk group, 450, and I could say OK. Of course, I have no interest in talking to them, so I'm just going to remove it. But you can add talk groups individually, or you can add a list, one or the other. And the same goes for digital contacts. So, there, so if you cannot upload the files for some reason, don't panic. You can also put them in individually in a pinch and you can still use your radio. So again this is Sebastian KB0TTL and this was video one of creating your own custom code plugs. Thank you for watching.